Hello, my CNC brother or sister. I'm Garrett with IDC Woodcraft, and I'd like to welcome you to this video where you and I are going to answer a question I get asked all the time in either email or in the YouTube comments down below the videos. And this always comes from those who are just getting into CNC routers or CNC lasers. And that is, can you use a Mac instead of a PC to do your design work and to run your machine like our long mill CNC router here? Now, there's two things I want to say here to start off. I am a PC user, I've always been a PC user. So what I'm gonna be covering here is really bird's eye view. And I'm gonna rely heavily on comments and I want you to rely heavily on comments if you're wondering this. So if you know more about this or can dive deeper into what I'm about to share, please put that down in the comments to help people out with this. All right, so can you run your design software on a Mac? Technically, you can't. Almost all the design softwares are built for the PC operating system. Now, there is an exception is if you use web-based software. So what's the difference between like the Vectric software and web-based design software? The software that I use and most design softwares are downloaded to your computer, they're installed on your computer, your operating system is running it. It's not anywhere else out there. It's on this guy right here. Web-based is not on that. It is out on some other server and it's already working on an operating system. You're just interfacing through the web with that design software. In that case, you can run it on your Mac operating system. Unfortunately, there's not a whole lot of web-based softwares out there as far as I know. There's the easel that's put out by Inventables that makes the X-Carve. As far as control software, I don't know. This is where I rely on people like uh, you if you're a Mac user and you've dealt with all this stuff. Need your help. The way you can get around this, I'm going through notes by the way, is to get a Windows emulator software. So Windows emulator is, we'll just say it, 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 it's tricking out your computer, your Mac computer, where it's, it, it's like an interface between the Windows program or operating system and your Mac operating system. It makes them work together. It's basically, it works like this. You have your Mac operating system, then you have your Windows emulator system, then you have your Windows operating system, then you have your design software on top of that. You're like stacking a bunch of softwares on top of that. If I'm thinking right and you know about this, please tell me if I'm right or wrong. I want to know. But so the em emulator will make it work on your Mac. Now I have, I can say this from people I've talked to in the CNC space uh, when, the, when they've gotten feedback on this where it's kind of hit and miss. Some people have had a really crappy experience trying to do that and ultimately went over to a PC to run their CNC machine. And others have had no problems at all. I actually had to do research on this and it was really hard to find this emulator experience in the space of this technical kind of stuff when you're talking about design work and, and, and software that actually runs a machine. Most people that I've, I've came across as far as reviews and what have you, which reviews are really hard to find on this, is they just didn't have a problem, but there's mostly students, right? They're just doing typing or playing games on the computer, what have you. I did get some pros and cons when it comes to this. And the pro of using an emulator is that you have one computer. And if you have the right emulator, you don't have to reboot the computer to switch over to your Windows environment, as far as I understand. There's some emulators that you can just switch without rebooting your computer. Emulator is actually a program that you have to purchase. Though there are some free ones out there, but be careful, you get what you pay for with free. So you have to buy the emulator to install on your computer. Then, well, I think emulators can cost what hundred dollars plus then you have to buy the Windows license to put on top to put your windows in your in your computer so you're having to buy two programs and then you have to buy the your design software get your control software or you can get the free design software of course you get what you pay for when you do that 
I've got a video that I've talked about the design software. Just did a little bit of comparison. I'll put a link for that down in the description if you're wanting to know. I do understand it if your budget constrained. The freebies, they do work, right? You just, you, you got limited, limited capability. But that's not for this video here. Go watch that other video. Some of the cons with this idea of using an emulator. So you have to load the emulator software on, then you have to load the Windows software on, and you lose a lot of your, your hard drive space on your Mac computer. Uh, I've saw this a number of times in my research that people were complaining how they, they just didn't have the space, so they had to buy extra external hard drives. Don't really like that because, you know, I mean, just the way it is. What I don't like is you're kind of working with two computers anyway. You can uh, use something called a bottler software that uh, you'll have to look that up. Bottler seems to not take as much space from what I understand. If you understand bottler software, please put it down in the description. But this is where like, it's, it gets too confusing. If you're not like real computer savvy, this is where I get worried, right? Because you're stacking programs on top of programs on top of programs, and if something breaks in there, it just gets hard to find. An alternative is to use a remote desktop computer that will plug into your Mac and basically you'll have a virtual environment that you can create on your Mac, but that's requiring two computers, a PC and, <laughs> and your Mac. So it's, it's kind of like, why am I even trying to do that? If you're gonna go that route, you just buy a PC to do your design work on this thing. There was one thing that I did come across that really concerned me with this emulator thing that makes me say don't try to emulate on uh, on a Mac it's like putting a Windows on there and I'm gonna read this to you from what I read so it goes like this Apple's Mac OS or operating system has utilities built in to protect user data and it's, uh, they're called X protect gatekeeper etc when you run a guest operating system on a Mac, which would be the Windows operating system, you expose the partition used for, for storing the OS, the OS operating system to viruses and malware targeting it. So this applies to Windows. So it is highly recommended to install antivirus software if you do this. Now I'm gonna read on. While Windows viruses cannot infect Mac operating systems, what happens is that the Mac becomes the host of the virus and is able to infect the PCs that are connected to the network. Connected to the network. So if you're just, uh, you got a home network Wi-Fi, it can infect it that way. Also, in some cases, if a virtual machine running Windows gets infected, it may potentially render the content of shared folders useless. So that means if you're sharing folders on your network, you can lose it across the entire network. So that's a big red flag for me to make me say, ah, I'm not sure you want to just uh, stick with a Mac when you're doing your design work or what have you. Comes down to it for me, the problem is you're stacking software on top of software. Mac, I, Mac OS, emulator, Windows, and then, uh, and then your design software. If you're going to go that route, there are emulators you can get that seem to crop up a lot. One is called Boot Camp, another one is called Parallels, and the other one is called uh, Wine Bottler. And from what I've heard, Parallels seems to be probably the most robust. Again, I can't say, I've never used it. What I am going to suggest is that you do switch to PC when you're doing your design work for your, for your CNC projects and to run your CNC router, like the long mill or your laser or whatever you have, it doesn't matter. And the reason is because the software is designed to work with that and we're just adding complication when when we're doing all this other stuff <clears throat> and again if it breaks you know what do you do I got a sip of coffee I'm a person who likes to have a, a inexpensive computer that will have the control software 
that will run my CNC router. I use G Sender, which is a free control software. It's actually put out by Long Mill, so it's optimized for Long Mill, but it works on any CNC router that has the Adreno based system. Basically, if you've got a CNC router, a benchtop unit, G Sender will work on it. I strongly recommend you get it because it's got such a nice user interface. They've done such a good job at getting it cleaned up. It's modern, they're always working on it, as opposed to something like UGS or some other ones. But if you're comfortable with what you're using or whatever, that you know, stick with it. But I like to use a cheap, inexpensive laptop. The the control software does not take up a lot of processing power. So you can get a cheap PC, a two or three hundred dollar PC. Uh, if you want to do that, I have links below for what I'm talking about. The, the, I got a couple PCs I picked out that are like 250 bucks that you can just dedicate to this machine. And then also, I like to use a standalone PC to do my design work. Now this this is my office computer. I don't just do design work, I do everything else on it, like edit videos for you. <laughs> but I like to keep the design and the and the, the control software separate because sometimes I walk away. I, I'm, I'm not afraid to walk away from my CNC router only because I've been doing the CNC machining for such a long time. I know what to expect. Rarely does anything happen. Uh, when you're brand new, of course, you want to stay there. Besides, it's mesmerizing watching your CNC machine do its dance around a project that it's carving out. But that's my recommendation, is to just go with the PC. The other thing with PCs is they're a hell of a lot cheaper than the Macs because a lot of people can make them. The Macs are proprietary, so you pay out the wazoo for it. That's one of the reasons why you're paying so much. But they're good machines too. You know, they can connect everything right away. What I'm gonna do is down in the description below is I'm going to leave links for two inexpensive laptops that you can dedicate to your CNC router, like the long mill or whatever you got. And to this exact laptop, which is a pavilion, although it's been updated, now I want to be a little clear on this one before you go and buy that because I'm going to put a third laptop down below. I use the Vectric VCarve software. It's, it's just very powerful. You can do so many things with it and if you're not budget constrained, it's the one I recommend. If you want to design 3D models, you would need to get the Vectric Aspire version which now you're upping the price, right? You're buying the capability to build 3D models and then you bring them into the VCarve version of your Aspire software and you can carve them out and do all the normal stuff you can do in, in the Vectric VCarve. That requires a little more processing power than the HP Pavilion here. So I'm gonna put a link for the computer I use that I've just gotten so I can do that. It's a bit pricier, but you know, you, you, if you want the ability, you gotta pay for the power, right? So, I think that's, I kinda of wrapped it up here. Uh, first of all, if you, again, are experienced with this, please help me out and put comments down below. If you are brand new and this, you've kind of been wondering what to do, give me a thumbs up if this gave you some guidance. And I'd like to see a comment down below from you as well. And if you're generally brand new to CNC routers, you may wanna to subscribe to this channel because I do know the Vectric software, I teach that, I teach CNC routers, I teach the router bits and uh, some other stuff. I'm just not a, a Mac teacher, okay? <laughs> we'll put it that way, I'm not the tech guy. So asking me these uh, questions beyond what I've explained here probably won't help, but I'll learn it. I gotta know it because I wanna help people out subscribe to the channel. Links down below for everything I've talked about. I also have a PDF with all the videos I've created that will walk you through the Vectric software, the design software, get you familiar with CNC routers and for the beginner. And I put all the videos in order in a list. <laughs> so that should probably help you out a little bit. And there's more links down below to do your research. I am a long mill CNC router owner as well. I, I, uh, I'm a proponent of that machine after doing a lot of research. If you are in the market for a CNC router, you probably want to watch the review video I did on that because I don't just review the machine, I really kind of deep dive into what you want to look for when it comes to CNC routers. I'm a Vectric user. I swear by that software because it's good software. Thanks for watching and we will talk to you next time. Happy CNC.